I can rule them in and realize how I pray sometimes. Maybe you don't, but I do. I pray more like a tourist asking God why he forgot my little umbrella in my passion drink and why he didn't make the lotion a little bit more so that it blocked the sun. Thinking that I'm here as a tourist and not realizing that I'm here on a tour of duty as a soldier. If I recognized and understood my purpose here, I could say, I'm not here for my own pleasure, my own comfort. Uh, let me sacrifice the seven course meal for the rations so that I can be about what I've been called to do. They had perspective that they were here, not as tourists on a pleasure ship, but as soldiers fighting a battle for their God. I need that perspective, don't you? We're still here because, because of worship. And worship takes the first priority. Amen. Are you telling me, are you trying to tell me that they stayed because the 11 o'clock service hadn't rang its last bell and the choir hadn't sang its last song? And I say, no. Not that at all. Worship is much more than that. Amen. Worship is about putting God as Lord of your life. Amen. Worship is about opening yourself and enthroning Him. It's about losing self and dying to self so that you can turn and worship the Savior. Amen. Worship is saying, I have, I have a place to put Him as Lord of my life. And what was happening in that dungeon is they were enthroning God in their life. And when it came time, they weren't willing to run because they knew that serving Him here today and making Him Lord was more important than us. Are you worshiping? You lifted Him up in your heart? I have to tell you, I looked on the internet and the internet doesn't tell you how to pronounce things. K-A-K-A, -A -A. you know him? Good, then you won't know if I pronounce it right or not. Sure. We'll call him KK. KK is uh, in Australia famous. He has made gold hits on the website. Overall rest of his team. But if you look carefully, on his shirt, I belong to Jesus. When they wear the white shirt. On a black shirt it says, Jesus has first place in my life. And he wears it on the feet. In the center, oh, in the center on the top, He's kneeling down after making a goal and thanking God in front of everybody. And when asked why, he said, I want everybody to know so that I don't forget that he's Lord of my life. Yes. And it causes me, when I've made the pledge before the world, it causes me to look at my actions and say, if they know that I claim Jesus as Lord of my life, it makes a difference in how I live every day. Because they're looking on to see, is he really? So he says, I make a public pledge so that my private life as well as my public life they all could know that God knows you. You know, I'm not too much on bumper stickers but I almost think I like one of those shirts. Don't you? I belong to Jesus. Wouldn't it be something if everywhere we went we had to stand to declare to the world what God's proper. We belong to Him. Wouldn't it change how we acted? The expectations that people had? And when we acted for Him, who would get the glory? Maybe, maybe worship is just reframing the circumstances and saying, I want you to be Lord. You know what I believe happened for them? They stopped and said, We've been called, God, to preach your word. And we're here. And praise God, you've given us a captive eye. They're listening. Their lives are touched. Why would we run? You've given me a ministry of suffering that I can use as a platform to declare who you are to the world. Amen. Could it be 
That God's ordained the very thing that's in your life to be a platform to testify to the world of who He is in your life. Of the struggle that you're going through today. Could it be that God's using that as a means for you to reach them? Amen. Then would you leave that? Would you ask Him to take it away? If you understood and knew that He was using it to reach others' lives, to help others to find Him, would you pray it away? Maybe all we need is a change in picture of what's going on in our life. Our congregation is not without being touched by the economic crisis that's going on. I know that some of you here, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, are struggling with issues of finance. To the place of losing houses or jobs, sometimes both, and sometimes a lot more at stake. It hurts, doesn't it, when you see somebody suffering? Yet in the same breath, in the same breath, I have two very good friends. I've served with you before. They decided to go on a missionary uh, venture to Ireland. He was a pastor in our denomination. He was actually one of my associate pastors in another church. He decided to give up ministry there to stop the ongoing conference paycheck that he received. To stop that, his wife quit her job. They took their two kids and moved to Ireland after raising funds enough to support themselves. They sold their house so they could make the trip. They lost their jobs. And they were happy about it. They were overjoyed. Because what they were doing was serving Jesus. In their mind, that house being gone was not an issue. The job not there. That was okay because it gave them freedom to go and serve God today where they needed to be. Amen. What's the difference between them losing their house and their job and us? Perspective. Just perspective. Surrendering to the Lord and saying, if you can use me through this struggle, then God, I'm yours. Praise you for it. If you can take these circumstances and turn them around so that it can bring honor to your name, or give me an opportunity to witness or share with people that I couldn't about who you are, then God, let it be. Amen. And I'm rejoicing in the opportunity. It was just a switch. Why were they there? Why did they stay? Because in their mind, God had gifted them a ministry there. 